Oregon is a region of contrasts. The north, which borders France, is characterized by the lonely Pyrenees with their ancient glaciers and clear mountain lakes, their steep-sided gorges and deep forests. This natural paradise in the north of Spain is barely populated, but parts of it are protected by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in the Odessa e Monte Perdido National Park. This remote area is home to a number of animal and plant species that are practically extinct in other parts of Europe. These include brown bears and Egyptian vultures. In stark contrast to the green wilderness of the Pyrenees is the fertile Ebro Valley. Most of Aragon's inhabitants live here, in one of the traditional towns along the river. The largest and most important of these cities is Zaragoza, the capital of the autonomous community of Aragon. The city on the Ebro has been internationally renowned not only since Expo 2008. The Basilica del Pilar, the largest Baroque building in Spain, rises with its 11 domes right next to the river and, together with the Puente de Piedra Bridge, forms an enchanting ensemble. Teruel, located further south in the Iberian foothills, is also well worth a visit. The home of Serrano Ham has always been a multicultural city, as evidenced by the numerous buildings in the Mudijar style. Gothic and Renaissance elements merge with Moorish-style elements to create a uniquely elegant mix. Now take a few minutes and let us show you the best places in Aragon. If you like this video, please support the Travel Owl channel with a like, comment, or a subscription. Thank you. If there is one place where art, nature and water come together, it is the Monasterio de Piedra. Located in the town of Nuevalas, the monastery is a natural park where the Piedra River has formed a series of imposing and whimsical waterfalls, a lake with crystal clear water and caves of impressive beauty in the splendor of a green park. The park offers us an enjoyable experience thanks to a tour of about two and a half hours through an unusual garden, where the sound of water in the waterfalls, caves and lakes takes us through a place of dreams. The visit is rounded off with a guided tour of the 12th century Cistercian monastery, several rooms of which can still be visited and which combines different artistic styles. It is said that the first chocolate on the European continent was made in these rooms. The architectural style of the houses is typical of the villages in the mountains of Aragon. Built from natural stone, shingles cover the gabled roofs. Wooden balconies are attached to the sunny sides. The windows are small to protect against the sun and cold. The ceramic or tough chimney heads are striking. In addition to the picturesque town center, the chain of the Pyrenees in the distance always catches the eye. 
the most outstanding sites are the two Romanesque churches from the 11th century and a pre-Romanesque monastery dating back to the 9th century. The small San Caprasio church was built in the Romanesque Lombard style. Together with the Way of St. James, the simple building is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Aragonese version of the pilgrimage route runs in the surrounding area. The Church of Santa Maria belonged to the Benedictine convent, which was built in the mid-11th century and existed until the mid-16th century, when the convent was moved to Hocker. Many of the abbesses and nuns came from the royal family and nobility of Aragon. The mighty, four-story tower with twin windows dominates the church building. The monastery dedicated to St. John the Baptist is located in the mountains south of the village. The cloister and the tomb of the kings of Aragon are well worth seeing. The Benedictine monastery was a center of culture and science in Aragon in the Middle Ages. With just over 50,000 inhabitants, Huesca is one of the smaller provincial capitals in Spain. In sparsely populated Aragon, however, it is already the second largest city in the northern Spanish region after Zaragoza. To the north of the city are the Pyrenees, which merge abruptly into the Aragonese plain within sight. The small old town is situated on a hill. One of the most important sites is the Gothic Cathedral of Huesca. Construction of the church began in the 13th century. Worth seeing is the main portal with 14 statues of apostles and saints, including the city's patron saint, San Lorenzo. In the Middle Ages, Huesca was at times the residence of the kings of Aragon. Two kings, Alfonso I and Ramiro II, are buried in the church of San Pedro el Viejo. The main square of the old town to the south of the cathedral, the spacious Plaza de López Ayue, is surrounded by modernist houses, including the Ultramarinos La Confianza grocery store, which opened its doors in 1871. To the south, Carla de la Duquesa de Villamosa leads into the lively lower town. The two traffic-calmed promenades Coso Alto and Coso Bajo follow the course of the demolished city walls. To the south of Coso Bajo is the nightlife district of El Tubo along Cala de Padre Huesca and Cala Roldan with numerous bars and restaurants. Huesca is known for its good tapas and regional Somontano wines. The small medieval old town is located on a hill at the confluence of the small rivers Sinca and Ara. There are actually only two streets, Carla Mare and Carla Santa Cruz, which run through the listed old town up to the central Plaza Mare Square. The path leads past old stone houses with wrought iron gates, secured windows and small balconies with flower boxes. Among the sites is the Romanesque parish church of Santa Maria with a mighty square bell tower, which was obviously also useful for defensive purposes. Construction of the church began at the end of the 11th century and it was consecrated in 1181. The church tower offers a beautiful view of the old town and the surrounding area. The large town square with the town hall opens up towards the castle, the Castillo de Ainza. On both sides of the main square are old buildings with archways where the communal wine presses used to be kept. From the walls of the castle there are fantastic views of the peaks of the central Pyrenees. Ainza was located in the historic county of Sobra and was therefore part of the Spanish Margraviate, the southernmost part of the Frankish Empire. The Castillo was one of the fortifications built to protect against the Moorish neighbor to the south, the Caliphate of Cordoba. 
construction of the fortress began in the 11th century. Calatheta Ijd is a picturesque village in the province of Tirul, in the region of Aragon. This charming town is known for its well-preserved medieval architecture, narrow cobbled streets and unique atmosphere. Calatheta Ijd has a rich history dating back to the Middle Ages, and visitors can admire the beauty of its Romanesque and Gothic churches and historic buildings. The town is surrounded by a breathtaking landscape characterized by olive groves, vineyards and rolling hills. Calatheta Ijd is a perfect destination for those seeking tranquility and wanting to experience authentic Spanish culture and history. The town hall and the castle, which is connected to the church of Santa Maria la Mer by a corridor, form the most successful Gothic ensemble in the province of Teruel. Valderobas is the most remarkable village in Matarania. You enter the town via the pointed arches of the medieval San Roque Bridge. It is made up of narrow, winding streets that lead up the hill to the two most important buildings, the 14th century castle, undoubtedly the most spectacular and artistic of all the castles in the province, and the 16th century church of Santa Maria la Mayor, which has been declared a historic monument. Its tower is connected to the castle by a corridor. This church, whose portal is adorned with a magnificent rose window, is an excellent example of Teruel's Gothic style. There are also many notable secular buildings, the Puerta de San Roque, also known as the Puerta de los Leones, 14th century, the Burgos portal, 13th-14th century, above which there is an apartment, or the town hall, 16th century. This Renaissance building with a large Aragonese arched gallery is a listed building. Like corn cobs, the rock towers rise vertically up to 275 meters high. The Malos de Riglos are among the most spectacular landscapes in the Spanish pre-Pyrenees. The eponymous mountain village of Riglos is located at an altitude of 678 meters directly below the high cliffs that rise vertically above the village. The car is best parked directly in the large parking lot at the entrance to the village. The village itself, first mentioned in a document dating back to 1068, consists of just a few alleyways that lead out to the small parish church of Nuestra Señora del Mayo. The path leads past a few bars and restaurants, and there is also a small grocery store. Hikers and climbers meet here, otherwise the mountain village maintains a quiet pace. The parish church stands directly under the 934 meters high rock Coney El Pison. Each of these rocks has its own characteristic name. The mountaineers hang from the rocks like small, colorful dots. 
Above them, large birds make their majestic circles through the blue sky. The mountains are an important refuge for birds of prey such as eagles and vultures. One of the jewels of the Maestrasgo in the province of Teruel is the medieval village of Mirambel, whose architectural ensemble was awarded the Europa Nostra Award a few years ago for its restoration. The old town has been declared a cultural asset. Situated on a high plateau next to the Cantavieja River, you are immersed in a medieval atmosphere as you enter the almost completely preserved town walls of Mirambel. This 13th-century city wall is the most complete and best preserved in the Maestrasgo de Teruel. The town hall is a monumental three-story building with the characteristic Aragonese Lonya Gallery, which houses the Gothic prison and a beautiful plenary hall. Next to it is the Baroque parish church, solid and elegant. Also worth seeing are the Gothic Augustinian monastery with its adjoining church, the San Roque Hermitage with an 18th-century altarpiece and a 17th-century baptismal font decorated with scraffito and tiger motifs and the San Martin Hermitage with several interesting altarpieces. The streets and small squares of Mirambel form a harmonious whole. Occasionally, palaces and mansions also appear, such as the one in Plaza Oliaga, with its fine masonry and three floors, the upper part of which has the traditional galleries with round arches. Cradle of the Kingdom of Aragon and Origin of Mysteries and Legends The Monastery of San Juan de la Pina, built at the beginning of the 10th century in the shelter of the rock, is a magical place that combines history, culture and nature like no other. During the Middle Ages, its isolation gave it a legendary character, linking it to the Holy Grail. The Monastery of San Juan de la Pina, built at the beginning of the 10th century in the shelter of the rock, is a magical place that combines history, culture and nature like no other. It preserves the remains of a primitive Mozarabic church on which the upper church and the Romanesque-style cloister were built, most of which were created by the master of Oguero. It was the royal pantheon of Aragon until the 12th century. The monastery of San Juan de la Pina, declared an asset of cultural interest, consists of several outbuildings from different eras. The atrium leads to the council chamber and the so-called lower church, which is Mozarabic from the 10th century. The pantheon of the nobles preserves two rows of niches decorated with round arches and a hawker-style checkerboard frieze. From there you can access the high church, 11th century, and the cloister, 12th century, a wonderful example of Romanesque art with a valuable gallery of carved capitals depicting biblical scenes. Daraka is the capital of the Jilaka Valley, a former border town. The town has a diverse, artistic and architectural ensemble of buildings that is undoubtedly of great interest and represents a mixture of Islamic and Christian styles. The historic town center is a protected monument. Daraka is located 83 kilometers from Zaragoza and is known for the variety and beauty of its monuments. The medieval old town is surrounded by 3.5 kilometers of city walls from the 13th and 14th centuries. The remains of the medieval castle rise up at one point. There are also two churches, which were begun in the Romanesque style and finished in the Mudijar style, 
the churches of Santo Domingo de Silo and San Juan de la Cuesta. In the Collegiate Church of Santa Maria, 16th century, is the Capilla de los Corporales, a relic preserved in an extraordinarily beautiful work of goldsmithing. Also worth seeing are the Church of San Miguel in Romanesque Baroque style or the Purist Monastery, mid-18th century, the Santa Ana Monastery and the Rosario Monastery, 15th century. Among the civil buildings, the Casa de los Luna, some palatial mansions as well as the Barrio de la Moria, the Moorish Quarter, with Renaissance and Baroque buildings from the 16th and 17th centuries are particularly noteworthy. The town is located in a fertile plain on the river Holon, which flows into the Ebro at Alagon. The origins of the town go back to the Roman city of Augusta Bilbalus. In the 8th century, the Moors built a castle near the settlement called Calat Ayub. The Moorish fortress thus gave its name to today's small town. In 1120, the Aragonese king Alfonso I conquered the town. Calat Ayud was granted city rights and developed into the second most important city in Aragon after Zaragoza. Like Daraca, Tarazona, and Teruel, Calat Ayud is one of the Mudijar towns in Aragon. The Mudijar style refers to architecture that is in the tradition of Moorish architecture but was built under Christian rule after the Reconquista. Numerous church towers in the center of Calat Ayud are considered exemplary of this architectural style. One impressive example is the octagonal church tower of the Collegiata de Santa Maria la Mer. The church was built in the center of the medieval old town on the site of the former mosque. The tower is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Iglesia de San Juan el Real houses several paintings by the young Goya. The church of Nuestra Señora de la Pina, located higher up, offers a beautiful view of the city. The town in the west of Aragon in the province of Zaragoza is advertised as Little Toledo. The little town has no need for this exaggeration. Tarazona lies on the border between the historic kingdoms of Navarre, Castile, and Aragon. This shaped its history, with wars, but also royal weddings. A maze of alleyways crisscross the elevated old town districts of San Miguel, La Ahora, and El Cinto. The old town of Tarazona is not a museum and some of its buildings have fallen into disrepair. However, this does not detract from the fact that the town is home to some architectural treasures. Your first destination shall be Tarazona Cathedral. Construction of the Church of Nuestra Señora de la Huerta began in the 12th century and was consecrated in 1235. This makes the cathedral one of the first Gothic churches in Spain. To the northeast of the cathedral is the Plaza de Toros Vieja. The former arena, built in 1790 and 1792, is surrounded by three-story residential buildings with balconies. These were rented out by the owners to visitors during bullfights and other festivities. The Church of Santa Maria Magdalena dates back to the 12th century, making it one of the oldest buildings in Tarazona. The brick bell tower was built at the end of the 15th century in the Mudijar style. The tall, square tower is the landmark of Tarazona.
hiking in summer, winter sports in winter, the Valley de Benesque in the Pyrenees offers good access to the Posets Maladetta Natural Park. Valley de Benesque is located in the very east of Aragon and offers the best access to the Posets Maladetta Natural Park. In terms of visitor numbers, this protected area is clearly overshadowed by the better known Odessa and Monte Perdido National Park. But this has the advantage of not being so overrun in summer. The main town in the valley is Benesk. The historic capital of the county of Ribogorza is surrounded by high mountains at over 1,100 meters. As a popular winter sports resort, Benesk has a relatively modern architectural style. However, it is fun to stroll through the alleyways of the old town. The originally Romanesque church of Santa Maria la Mer was given its current appearance in the 17th century. Worth seeing are the town palaces, such as that of the Dukes of Ribogorza. A medieval bridge crosses the river Isira. The Posets Maladetta Nature Park stretches south of the border with France between the Valley de Schistau in the west, the Valley de Benesque and the Basurka Reservoir of the River Nagera Ribogorzana in the east. The highest peak in the Spanish Pyrenees, the 3,404 meters high Anito, is located in the area of the nature park. The remains of the last glaciers in Spain can be found here. Lonely mountain lakes and waterfalls characterize the landscape. The nature reserve is accessible via numerous long-distance hiking trails and refugios. The imposing wall that surrounds it and its eleven towers will welcome you. Built in the 11th century, it was first a royal palace, then a monastery and today a movie set. Founded by the great monarch Sancho III El Mare, Loa Castle is a true jewel of civil and military architecture of the time. Built on a rocky outcrop at an altitude of 1,071 meters, it defended the borderline of the Kingdom of Aragon and was a key element for King Sancho III El Mare in the Christian reconquest of this land from the Muslims. It has been used as a backdrop for films on numerous occasions, including Ridley Scott's Kingdom of Heaven. From its location, it has control over the entire plain of the Hoya de Huesca and especially Belia, the most important Muslim place in the area which controlled the rich agricultural lands of the plain. See for yourself how well the towers are preserved. Inside the church of Santa Maria shows a great variety of decorations in its capitals. Under the church you can see the crypt covered with a barrel vault. The small chapel, the crypt of Santa Cateria, located at the entrance, and the majestic castle church, where the dome stands out for its unusual Romanesque style. The listed medieval village of Alquiza rises between the deep ravines carved patiently by the river Rio Vera, in an impressive natural landscape that forms part of the Parque Natural de la Sierra y Cañones de Guara and the Rio Vera Cultural Park. Visiting this place is almost like traveling back in time. From the top of the rock, the impregnable fortified church of Santa Maria la Mer dominates the labyrinth of the medieval village. The beautiful cloister next to the magnificent church, with its Romanesque origins and murals, is particularly impressive. The beautiful and secluded Plaza Mare Square is surrounded by porticos and is the real center. 
Here you will find the most stately houses in the town. Rocks, water, history, art and legend come together in this town, which has been declared a Spanish cultural asset and is on the list of the most beautiful villages in Spain. In addition to the gorge hiking trails, there are also numerous hiking trails in the area. The Ruta de las Pasarelas del Vera, a hiking trail that runs partly along the river at lofty heights, is particularly recommended. The cave paintings of Quisans and Caimayachas in the Rio Vera Cultural Park can also be visited from Alquiza. The liveliest city in the Pyrenees has an important heritage, of which the Romanesque Cathedral stands out. It was one of the first buildings of its kind to be built on the peninsula at the end of the 11th century. It was born in connection with the New Kingdom of Aragon and the Way of St. James, becoming a temple of reference. Its influence can be seen in the reproduction of the characteristic Trinitarian chrism on its main facade or the famous Jacques chessboard. The extraordinary diocesan museum exhibits one of the best collections of medieval paintings in the world. The old town is home to many other interesting buildings such as the citadel, whose origins date back to the late 16th century and which houses the Museum of Military Miniatures. The Renaissance town hall or churches such as Santiago, del Carmen or San Salvador and San Ginés with the sarcophagus of the Infanta Doña Sancha, a true jewel of Romanesque sculpture. Whether it is winter or summer, spring or fall, Hocker is a lively town, with streets full of stores, bars and restaurants. This is mainly due to its proximity to the winter centers of Astun and Candanchu, as well as its exceptional nature and rich monumental heritage. Anyone passing Teruel should not make the mistake of simply driving past it. The small capital of the province of the same name is home to some rare architectural treasures. The Plaza de Carlos Castel forms the central square of the old town. Locals call the main square Plaza del Torico. This is because a small bull, barely 45 centimeters long and 37 centimeters high, stands on top of a column. One block to the northwest is the cathedral. Carla de los Amantes leads northwest from the cathedral forecourt to the Torre de San Martín. The tower and the church of the same name are located close to the city wall. This tower and the almost identical Torre de El Salvador in Carla El Salvador on the southwestern edge of the old town date back to the 14th century. From the Plaza del Torico, Carla Hartzenbusch leads up to the highest point of the old town, an emblematic place with other sites. The Mudajar Tower of the Church of San Pedro dates back to the 13th century, making it the oldest of these towers in Teruel. Next to the Church of San Pedro is the Mausoleum of the Lovers of Teruel. The coffins of the famous medieval lovers Isabel de Segura and Juan Diego de Marcia are exhibited here. Their love remained unfulfilled due to the hard-heartedness of Isabel's father. There was no happy ending and so the story concludes with the tragic death of the two. In the east of Spain lies one of the kingdom's largest cities, Zaragoza. 
But it is not its size that makes the city of Zaragoza so interesting for tourists, rather it is the many sites in the city that attract tourists to Zaragoza by the dozen. The main attraction of the city of Zaragoza is undoubtedly the Basilica del Pilar, a church that encompasses a large area. The Basilica del Pilar is Spain's largest church built in the Baroque style and therefore probably the most important church of its kind in Spain. In addition to the Basilica del Pilar, there is another important church for tourists, which is the oldest church in Zaragoza and has been mentioned in record since the 8th century. We are talking about the Catedral de la Cio, which is not only old but also very beautiful and is illuminated by numerous lights at night, making it a very special attraction. Apart from the many churches in Zaragoza, there is the Aliaferia Palace, which has a long history and is still used today as the seat of the Parliament of Aragon and can be visited. But Zaragoza is not only known and loved for its traditional sites, more modern attractions also find their place in Zaragoza. For example, the World Expo was held in Zaragoza in 2008. Reddish medieval buildings cling to the hillside above the steep gorge of the Rio Guadalavia, which flows around the town in a loop. Massive city walls encircle an entire mountain ridge, and a castle sits enthroned on a rock above the old town. Albaracin is truly a feast for the eyes. Today's old town is characterized by medieval architecture, which you can discover on a walking tour. The best way to do this is on the 1.9km Paseo Fluvial Ascent. The circular route, which can be completed in just under 40 minutes, rewards you with panoramic views of Albaracin. Behind an iron suspension bridge, the path leads up to the 18-metre-high Torre de Doña Blanca, the southernmost section of the city wall, high above the deep hairpin gorge of the river Guadalavia. The El Salvador Cathedral towers above the city, its spire covered with brightly colored ceramic tiles. The single nave church has been extensively restored. The main altar dates back to the mid 16th century and there are also Baroque elements in the side chapels, for example. Anyone strolling through the small medieval town will find themselves in a labyrinth of narrow old town alleyways, winding staircases and densely packed houses, Heavy wooden doors with wrought iron door knockers, in Spanish called picaportes, small crooked windows and wood carvings on the balconies transport visitors back to another time. The Odessa and Monte Perdido National Park, declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, comprises a group of four valleys, Odessa, Anisklo, Escuane and Pinata, that extend as arms around Monte Perdido, the highest limestone mountain in Europe. The Odessa Valley is the heart of the park. Walking along its paths and merging with the surroundings is an experience that will stay with you forever. Thousands of people from all over the world come to admire wonders such as the Tozol do Mayo, the Estrecho Waterfall, the Soso Steps and the Beach Forest at any time of the year. There are endless excursions and climbs that you can do in this valley at any time of year. 
The one that takes you to the Cola de Caballo waterfall is a classic, as its beauty adds to the ease with which it is suitable for everyone. Vultures, eagles and marmots live together in dense beech and pine forests. Transparent rivers and lakes, high mountain meadows and vertiginous cliffs. At the entrance to the valley is Tola, a charming, typically Pyrenean village that offers visitors to the national park all the services they need for their stay. From Tola you can drive to the Buia Ruelo Valley, a beautiful, little-known excursion. Broto is located near Tola. Visit the beautiful town center and don't miss the spectacular Sorosal waterfall.